there is a recurring issue when you are in a collection list. So if you want to trigger something on an item, you'll create variables and workflows. But since it's in a repeated list, that we all use the same variables and workflows, that can lead to every line executing the same workflows and having the same behavior at the same time. For instance, if you want to display a group of buttons when your mouse enters an element, then every button on every line would appear. And that's not what we really want. In this video, I'm going to show you how to isolate how an item works with reusable components. So I'm going to show you how to recreate that component. So when I focus on my inputs, we can see that on the right we have a button that is appearing and every time that I change input then we have a different button that is appearing. And if you look at the layer panel then we can see that this is just a repeated item list and that is just a basic array. So the benefit of using a component is that we're able to scope the behavior of each of the instances. So if I go inside of my line component here, we can see that this line is made up of two things. First, we have the input wrapper that only holds the input. And we have the button wrapper that holds the button and the tooltip. First, let's focus on how to display the buttons on the right. On my variable panel, I've created a new variable is focused. So this variable is of type boolean. And what's happening when I focus on my input here, so on focus, I'm just changing the value of that boolean to true. So when I do that, that will display my button wrapper because on that button wrapper, I have on the settings, on the condition here, I have bound the condition to the is focused variable. So unfocus is turning true. And we have the opposite thing happening when we unfocus the input. So that would be on blur. And on blur, what we are doing is that we are changing the is focused variable to false. So that will hide the buttons. And I've added a little time delay. So when we unfocus the input, we have time to execute the workflow of the button before hiding it. So that leads to having this kind of behavior. And we are focusing on the input. It displays if we're unfocused, then 200 milliseconds after the button wrapper is hidden. And because we are inside of the components, this behavior will only apply inside of it. What's more is that all the workflows and variables are stored inside. If I want to change anything on that behavior, then I can do it in one place. So that's convenient. And the second thing I wanted to show you was how to display this tooltip when we hover over the button. So you notice that if I go pretty fast here, the hint is only showing on the current button that, that I'm hovering. And we could apply the same logic as we did with the variable, with the scoped variable. We could have a new variable with a show tooltip, tool for, for instance. But there is another way to do that a bit simpler on this case. That would be with the states. So the state is not something that is specific to a component, but it's also useful to localize a behavior. So if we look at my button wrapper here, we see that I have a hover state. That hover state is also applied to the children. So what this allows me to do is that if we go to the tooltip component here, uh, on the default state, we will hide the rendering or we will hide the tooltip. And if I go to the button wrapper hover, so that is in inherited by the parent, then I can show this. So this kind of setup allows me to set a behavior only on the children of a component. So that's really useful on those type of cases. So that's it. In this video, we've seen how to use reusable components to scope variables and workflows so that their behavior is proper to each of the instances. 
I hope that was useful and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.